Since 1992, the Center for Continuing Education, CCE, has presented seminars featuring the best in topics and talent. Our programs are available in online, DVD, and CD formats. CCE can also customize seminars for your law firm or corporate law department needs. The Center for Continuing Education is a State Bar of California approved MCLE provider. CCE, the Center for Continuing Education, is a State Bar of California MCLE approved provider. CCE certifies that this program is approved for MCLE credit. CCE, the Center for Continuing Education, presents Economic Analysis in Business Matters, presented by Dr. George A. Juganatos. Based in Sacramento, Dr. George A. Juganatos has been a professor of economics for over 17 years. He has taught economics, finance, and quantitative analysis at University of California, Davis, University of California, Santa Cruz, California State University, Sacramento, and California State University Hayward. He has published and engaged in seminars in the fields of economics of development, political economy, economic history, environmental economics, public policy, and economic modeling and forecasting. Dr. Juganatos serves as an expert witness for cases involving personal injury, wrongful death, wrongful termination, housing discrimination, employment discrimination, economic loss, business valuations, public finance, and breach of contracts. He has consulted and given testimony for numerous attorneys in California, as well as in Nevada, Iowa, Montana, Hawaii, and New York. Among his clients are numerous government agencies, including the California Attorney General and the California Department of Finance, the City of San Francisco, State Farm Insurance, the Bank of New York, and numerous law firms. Dr. Juganatos has advised California State Assembly and congressional candidates on economic issues and policies and has been asked to review economic platforms of United States Senate and California gubernatorial candidates. On several occasions, he has provided commentaries on economic events and issues for television and radio. He received his Ph.D. in economics from the University of California at Riverside. Dr. Juganatos is member of the National Association of Forensic Economics, American Economic Association, Association for Evolutionary Economics, and Friends of Mount Athos Society. His website is www.juganatos.com. He may be contacted at george at juganatos.com. Hello. Thank you for joining us again today. We're going to be covering economic loss in business matters. Hopefully you'll find it quite informative and even enriching. Don't worry, I'll take it easy today on you since I gave a final at my university for the students. So we'll take it a little bit easy. At any rate, commercial loss is a business loss of profits or loss of asset value resulting of an, from actions of another party. In general, two types of remedies or two categories of remedies. One would be expectations remedy where the breaching party would pay an amount uh, to the plaintiff so that the plaintiff would be as well off as expected had the incident not occurred. Another category of remedies are reliance remedies. The payment amount would make the plaintiff as well off as if the plaintiff never entered into the contract. Anyhow, these are just two general categories just to start us off with. First, a little bit on measuring lost profits, at least uh, an overview for now. Potential components would include, obviously, loss of revenues, short-term increase in operating costs, loss of working capital, and working capital generally is defined as current assets. Current in accounting and finance refers to short-term assets. 
assets that can be liquidated within a year, roughly speaking. Also, other potential components would be loss of inventory, loss of fixed capital, which is, uh, inc basically includes equipment and buildings, as well as uh, underperformance of equipment. So these are the potential components involved in measuring lost profits. The impacts could be significant, and usually are, but not fatal or fatal. So that's how we can really understand these impacts as either being non-fatal or fatal, and generally if it comes to litigation, it would be certainly significant. Non-fatal losses of revenues. Often gross profits are used. Gross profits are revenues minus the costs of goods sold. The acronym COGS, C-O-G-S. So that's gross profits, revenues minus costs of goods sold. So often gross profits are used when we're measuring lost profits. Just as often, maybe a little bit more often, would be the use of net profits. Net profits often is argued in case law, at least from what I have gleaned. Net profits are defined as gross profits minus overhead costs. And an example of overhead costs would be rent, security, certain forms of labor, and that would include oh, uh, accountants, perhaps if the firm has an attorney on, on board. In economics and in law, we make a distinction in categories of costs. One particular case, Oakland, California, Tal Company versus Seville's, also discusses this. But there are other cases, and it's very intuitive that we must distinguish between types of costs. And um, one type of cost is fixed cost, or one category of cost is fixed costs. Fixed costs do not vary with revenues or sales. They stay constant, hence the term fixed costs. Then there are variable costs, like the term. Variable costs are costs which may vary with the level of revenues or sales. In other words, variable costs are those which can be decreased or perhaps eliminated. This is an important point, actually, in, for mitigation purposes. And certain case law that I have read suggests this needs to be followed, or at least attempted, by the plaintiff. Once again, variable costs are those costs which can be decreased or even eliminated in some cases after the loss of revenues have begun, after the incident. Fixed costs are not relevant in this, uh, in mitigation, basically. Fixed costs are not relevant. Now, um, moving on to costs of goods sold, there is a slight problem that I wanted to alert you to that experts should be aware of and normally are, I would imagine. What do costs of goods sold and overhead costs include? Well, this is a rhetorical question. Firms may account for these differently. So the expert, and as well as yourselves, the attorneys, could review the financial accounts or financial statements of the firm to understand what is included in overhead costs and costs of goods sold. So it can vary to some degree, not much, but it, it can vary from firm to firm, their method of keeping track of costs. 
then I suggest are advertising and salaries and overhead or in cost of goods sold. These, in fact, may vary with revenue. So if there is an issue, statistical techniques may be used to 